What it is, my Tino Peace and Grease here, and shout out for you, Deontay. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Sisters of Parvis update. Now, I've largely remained radio silent about this for a couple of reasons. The first is that in the past, when I tried to make this video, I broke into a rant. So for the second reason, I really wanted to take some time and commit some thought to it before I say anything I'm about to say, because I don't want it to be misconstrued. Now, at its core, this isn't a bad update, and I don't wish to give that appearance. All of the things that we've come to expect from DE, the graphical properties, the sound effects, the music, the voice acting, all of this was very well done, which is per usual for DE. The problem is really the decisions surrounding it. Now, before I dive into that, let's quickly and briefly talk about the positive additions with this update. The first is if you like robot companions. If so, we now have robot dogs. This does beg the question, when are the robot cats coming? Because you know they are. I, for one, would like a robotic skunk that lifts its tail and sprays enemies with toxin. I don't really want that. I'm being a smartass. The point is, if robot companions are your bag, we've got them now. Furthermore, DE has added some new weapons. And I gotta say, I'm loving these weapons, man. I'm having a hard time choosing between what primary I want to run and what secondary I want to run. And I haven't even had a chance to mess with the tenant melee weapons yet, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. But these are very good, very fun to use, albeit I am concerned that many of these are going to wind up on the nerf chopping block. I certainly hope that doesn't happen, but we're going to have to wait and see. My only criticism, which you already know, is that be unfortunately these are all going to require you to level them six times and invest five forma each. So two to eight, I, I think we're looking at about 35 items now that require being leveled six times by the player and five forma. So you're looking at roughly 170 forma. Now this looks like a shameful ploy by DE to do nothing more than just to sell forma. Now, this would be a completely different conversation if there was any form of benefit for doing so. If we gained something out of leveling these items six times and, and investing five formas each, okay, we could have that conversation, but we can't right now because there is no benefit. This is a system that needs to go away and it has needed to go away long before now, but yet here we are again. Now DE has also made a very positive change, albeit a minor one, still nonetheless a positive one. And that is that they've added a piece of equipment that you can slot into your gear wheel known as Requiem Ultimatum. Now the Liches have always had a problem and by extension the Sisters as well. And that is when you attempt to use your pairs on and you get the sequence incorrect this drains your Lich's emotional meter and as well as your sister by the way. This means that players then must resort to running many, many more missions and gathering many, many more murmurs, even if they did not need them. This little beauty does away with that. By deploying this on your Lich's planet or your sister's planet, it instantly spawns them in so that you can attempt to use your pairs on again. So as much as I really like this change and as, as small of a change as it is, my only criticism is that the drop rate needs to be buffed. Now I got two of these for logging in after the update and I've done about 12 sisters and liches combined since the update and I only have three. To fall into chaos. So and the drop rate definitely needs to be invasions. buffed. Another positive change, again, albeit very small, is that they added a new Requiem mod known as Ool. Now, this is a very nice feature, and I use it as a safety net, meaning that if I run out of a particular Requiem mod, and I need it for my Lich or my sister, instead of having to drop everything and go farm Requiem relics and farm Requiem mods and hope I get the one that I need, instead, I can slot Ool into my Parazon, get through my Lich or my sister, and then afterward, 
go farm relics and requiem mods. So, as such, that's a perfectly fine feature. I have no problem with it. However, we still have no skip feature, and we've been asking for one, well, since glitches have been added to the game. In fact, even DE has talked about a skip feature, but yet, there's still not one in sight. Now, this is where it gets hairy. If this was DE's attempt to add a skip function, sadly, it fails miserably right out of the gate for a few reasons. The first of which is you can only slot one of these in your Parazon. Just one. Now, if you could slot three of these mods into your Parazon, well, you potentially now have a skip feature, but as it is, you can only slot one. So, what are you really skipping? You're still going to have to farm two to three Requiem mods worth of Murmurs. You're still going to be burning Requiem mods. You're still going to be burning Requiem relics. And by extension, you're still going to be burning reactant. And by extension, you're still going to be burning time. So, again, what are you skipping? Ultimately, not a damn thing. So, as a skip feature, it fails miserably. However, I just want to say that if this was truly DE's intent to add a skip feature, I appreciate it, DE. And I am not being facetious. With all sincerity, I truly mean thank you. At least trying. Sure, it may have failed. But if they're trying, that's kind of where the next great thing comes from. As you try something, if it doesn't work, it fails. You learn, you adapt, and you try again. So, as a safety net type of feature, it's perfectly fine. As a skip function, it's an utter failure. But, learn from it, DE. Adapt, and try again. Because as a skip feature, this doesn't cut it. Furthermore, these only have a 25% drop rate. To give you an example, again, I got two for logging in after this update, these two, which means I've earned four total with 12 Kuba Liches and Sisters combined since the update. So, unfortunately, this means that people with very good RNG are going to be sitting on a fat stack of these things, but players like myself with historically bad RNG are going to be sitting on a handful. So I would like to see the drop rate buff just a little bit more. So now we need to get into the nitty gritty. As I said at the beginning of the video, at its core, this is not a bad update. And I want to be clear about that. It's not. The problem with this update is the decisions surrounding it. As an example, in completely a hypothetical situation, what if I told you that I had an inside source at DE? And the next update, 100% guaranteed, was going to force players to play Defection, Conclave, and Infested Salvage. But DE wasn't going to improve, change, or alter any of those game mo modes, nor were they going to add anything to them players were going to have to run them purely to advance the mission, the quest. What would your response be? Yeah, you'd probably have some colorful language in response, and rightfully so. Now again, that was completely hypothetical, but the reason I bring that up is because that is precisely what this update does. It forces players to engage with old game modes but DE doesn't even care enough themselves to improve or change any of these game modes or add anything to them. So the ultimate question is, if you don't care enough DE to improve these, why should the player? Now, as it stands right now, this update seems to focus on forcing players to play those old game modes. For example, we're now forced to play Granum Voids. The issue here is countless players, myself included, need nothing from the Granum Voids. I've ran this many, many times for myself, for friends, for clanmates. I'm sitting on multiple sets of Protea in my foundry, not to mention the one I have built in my arsenal and the one that I've subsumed to my helmet. So I don't need any part of Protea. Furthermore, I don't need any of the weapons. I've built all of the weapons, leveled all of the weapons, and formed all of the weapons, and this isn't even counting the countless other sets again, that I have in my foundry. So I don't need any of that. So running Granum Voids benefits me in no way, shape, and or form. At all. Now, if DE had, say, 
added the Tenet melee weapons to the Grand and Boyd, now I have a reason to run it again. The Tenet melee weapons have a connection to the Corpus, to Parvis, to the Sisters. The Grand and Boyd would have been the ideal spot for them. Now you may be wondering, where the heck did the Tenet melee weapons wind up? With a random syndicate. And I can't make this up. Now you may be thinking, oh, so I just used my syndicate faction standing to buy them. No, if only it were that simple. No, instead, DE has thrown a new resource into the Void Storms. So now you must run the Void Storms to earn the resource to go back to the syndicate and buy them. Again, your question is more than likely, has DE addressed any of the valid criticisms about the Void Storms? No, nothing. Have they added anything to the Void Storms? No, nothing. Void Storms are sadly still a joke of a game mode in Warframe. If we had a relic opening race where you ran a Void Storm mission to open a relic, and I ran any other relic fissure mission in the game, I'd be able to open more than one relic in the time you're opening your first. On top of that, there's no benefit whatsoever to ever running the Void Storms. Now, I wish I could say that was the end of it, but it's not. DE is now forcing us to interact with K drives. So you're probably thinking, well, DE must have completely revamped the K drives because they know a lot of people don't like them, right? Wrong. DE has barely touched them, so they're still as awful as they have always been. But now we have to run it to get the new Warframe. Excuse me, the Warframe blueprint. And the mission itself is ridiculous. It's awful. Again, I wish I could say that was the end of it, but <laughs> sadly it's not. DE has added a whole extra other step on top of Railjacks, on top of your Liches, excuse me. Now, to get rid of your Lich, you've got to run a full Railjack mission. And keep in mind, DE did away with all of these short Railjack missions in the last Railjack update because, you know, short Railjack mission bad, according to DE. So when I say you have to run a fully-fledged Railjack mission, I mean 70-plus fighters, four cruise ships, security nodes on the ship before you ever get to your Lich. Now, at this point, your questions may be, has DE added anything to the players to compensate them for the increased time requirement? Not a thing. At all. Apparently, the time we invest to farm our Requiem Relics and to refine our rea Requiem Relics and, and, and farm Reactant and, and crack Relic after Relic after Relic trying to earn sets of Requiem Mods and burning through our Requiem Mods and our Requiem Relics and our Reactant to, to get a Lich and get rid of a Lich over and over again. Apparently, all of that time isn't enough in DE's eyes. No, we must invest more time. And player compensation? There is none. There is absolutely zero benefit to doing this. Now, to be clear, I have no problem with the Railjacks, excuse me, the Sisters being in Railjack. It makes perfect sense. The Sisters started in Railjack. They should end in Railjack. So I have no problem with that. But the Kuba Liches have never had anything to do with Railjack. In fact, the Kuba Liches still have nothing to do with Railjack. On top of that, now you must fight your Lich twice and defeat your Lich twice. Same goes with your sister. This defeats the entire purpose of having a final confrontation. You've already fought and defeated them once, but now you must go and fight and defeat them again. Doesn't seem like a final confrontation to me if you're having to do it multiple times, does it? That portion is pretty idiotic. Now, all of this could have been averted by very simple, basic questions. 
the very questions I just asked. Forcing players to cra play Grand and Void. What does the player earn? Nothing. That's a problem. Forcing players to play Void Storms. Have you addressed their concerns? No. Have you added anything to it? No. Have you improved any type of benefit to running Void Storms? No. Forcing players to play K Drives. Have you revamped them? No. Forcing players to play Railjack. Are you compensating the players for the increased time requirement? No. Are you adding anything to it? No. Have you fixed the biggest problem with Railjack that I have pointed out from day one, second one, that Railjack has been added to this very second right now? The horrendous intrinsic skill tree and economy. No. Again, the question comes down to one simple thing. DE, if you do not care about these game modes enough to fix them, address players' concerns, to add a damn thing to them, why should the player? Now, to be clear, if DE had improved, fixed, altered, changed, made better, added anything to these modes, I wouldn't have a problem with having to run these game modes. It makes sense. DE invests time and resources into changing up, fixing these game modes. Yeah, of course DE wants players to see it. They've invested time and man hour into it and resources. Of course they would want players to, to see it and interact with it. I would have no problem with that. But the fact that DE doesn't even care enough about these game modes to make any changes, that's really a problem. Now, I would love to give you some valid excuse as to why this happened. But I've racked my brain and I can come up with nothing. For example, what if the interns did this update? All of the main staff at DE went on vacation and it was just the interns that did this update. In that case, I can excuse a lot. This was their very first update. They did a good job. They released it an update that wasn't buggy or glitchy, that had some nice additions to it. But they don't know the game. They don't know the community. They don't know the game's history. They don't know about the criticisms we have about certain things. So, of course, they wouldn't know to ask these questions. But it wasn't the interns that did this update. It was the main staff. I even came up with far-fetched excuses. Like, what if Tencent kicked in DE's door and took over the studio and was like, No more good updates ever. Every update from now on must be shit. Can you imagine that movie? Digital Extreme Studio has been taken over. Only one group can take it back. One million registered losers are seeking vengeance. Yeah, that sounds like a shit movie. I wouldn't watch it either. Anyway, being a smartass, the point is that I've tried to think of any plausible reason why that this update could have been released. And there isn't any. This was clearly somebody at DE messing up and the other staff not giving enough of a shit to ask these very basic questions. Or maybe they did. But the other staff just didn't care enough. I remember a long time ago I made a video and I told DE on their whiteboard in their conference room at the very top, right in permanent marker, what does the player gain? If they had done that, that single question could have, res could have resolved most of the problems with this update. But clearly they didn't. So unfortunately, at its core, while this wasn't a bad update, the decisions surrounding it were horrendous. And unfortunately, I do fear for the next update. Again, are you really going to force us to play Conclave and, and Infested Salvage and all of these types of old game modes without changing them, improving them, modifying them, or adding anything to them? At this point, anything's possible. Unfortunately. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm hopeful that DE learns, but they've made this mistake in the past. So, are they going to make it again? Sadly, yeah. I hope they don't. I hope they learn. I hope they keep this lesson close to their heart and they don't make it again. But the realist in me is saying, yeah, they will. But only time will tell. We'll have to kind of carry on from here. Sadly, I know a lot of players that came back to Warframe for this update. And each one of these things, 
items offended somebody and they left again. I'm going to be forced to use K drives? Have they redone them? No, I'm gone. We're going to be forced to run Grand and Boyd? I don't need anything from the Grand and Boyd. Are we getting anything new? No, I'm gone. We're going to be forced to run Void Storms? Oh, does that mean DE fixed anything about it? No, I'm gone. We're going to be forced to run K drive just to get rid of our Lich now? Are we getting compensated for the extra time requirement? No, I'm gone. I know a ton of players who came back just for this update and then immediately left. Again, the decisions surrounding it, oof, they're bad. Very, very bad. But I'm going to leave it here. Let me know what you guys and gals think. I respond to everybody that does. How's the Sisters of Parvis update been treating you? And until next time, peace out.